Victor! Give Victor the lead! Headed by McCoy, and in they score! The Braves get it back. Quick shot! And a score for Ted Nagel! Right off his horizon! He gets it! Touchdown, McQuay! Punch! Power punch! Out of the shot and a goal! Dribble handoff to Shatters. What do you think? Bang! The Braves have it. Let's see they shoot it! Score! Indian. And in order to assure the safety and enjoyment of involved, we ask you observe the following rules. Please remain in the spectators areas during the contest. Please show the proper respect to all players, coaches, and officials. Please keep your cheering positive and help us set a fine example of sportsmanship for our student and athletes. We expect all fans in attendance to follow these guidelines or you may be asked to leave. Please remember the Section 5 sportsmanship motto. Be loud, be proud, be positive. At the completion of the contest, please remain in the spectator areas and do not go onto the playing surface. This is a tobacco-free facility. Use of substances is prohibited. Finally, if you leave the facility, you will not be readmitted. Section 5 thanks you. For this afternoon's starting lineup, first for the visiting Eagles. <laughs> Junior, number six, Captain Zach Barrett. Sophomore, number 15, Louis Conti. Freshman, number three, Colby Hughes. Freshman, number one, William Clutt. Senior, Captain, number 10, Michael McHugh. Senior, Goalkeeper, Captain, Jordan Ostrander. Junior, number five, Toby Hesser. Senior, number 13, Jeffrey Pratt. Freshman, number eight, Jonathan Reyes. Junior, number nine, Riley Robinson. Senior, number two, Shane Scott. The Eagles are coached, rich, coached by Rich Esposito and assisted by Mike Walzer. And now the starters for the Keshequa Indians. Freshman, number 16, Ian Henrik. Sophomore, number 5, Boone Douglas. Junior, Captain, number 7, Nathan Mayer. Senior, number 9, Hunter Wood. Senior, number 10, Renee Figura. Senior, number 14, Ryan Stevens. Senior, number 11, Sterling Strang. Senior, number 12, Avery Strobel. Senior, goalkeeper, Captain Tyler Malibur. Senior, number 2, Captain Kelly Wood. And senior, captain, number eight, Reese Powers. The Indians are coached by Ron Maycumber Jr., assisted by Ron Maycumber Sr., Pete Goho, and Abijah Gass. Would everybody please rise for the playing of the national anthem?
to Avon High School for this Section 5 Class C2 sectional finals brought to you by the Varsity Media Sports Network. My name is John Garino. With me, I have Kyle Sanson. Today, we have the six seed Kendall Eagles taking on the one seed Keshequa Indians. Kendall comes in with an overall record of 10 7 and 1 on the season. They defeated Perry and Harley Allendale Columbia in the first two rounds. The upset-minded Eagles then beat the number two-seeded Bradford Dundee one nothing in the semifinals. Coach Rich Esposito's squad has been labeled the underdogs, but is no stranger to the upset. Coach Esposito said he believes the team needs to get a quick start, get an early goal, and let the Indians know they're here to play. Keshequa, the number one seed with a 16-2 and overall record, the Indians got here by two shutouts. First, they defeated Byron Burge and Elba 4-0 and Boulevard Richburg 7-0 in the semis to reach the finals. Coach Maycumber, well known around Section 5, not only for coaching Keshequa, but he refs Section 5 girls basketball. Keshequa comes in as defending 2020 Class D1 champions. Moving up to C2, they look to keep the momentum going with another sectional title. This is the first matchup of the season for the two clubs. The winner will meet Williamson in the Class C state qualifier November 2nd to represent Section 5 in the Far West Regional. We look forward to bringing you all the action here live on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Thank you for joining us. All right, we're about to get off to the kickoff. Ref's just making all his checks, make sure the goalies are good, make sure the sideline refs are good. Probably going to signal up here for the timekeeper too. And just for everybody at home, Keshequa is in the orange and black and Kendall obviously in the white with the blue numbers. And here we go. So we're underway. Kendall kicks it back. So once again, Coach Esposito wants a quick start. Keshequa highly favored in this matchup here. Yeah, seeding wise, this is very lopsided compared to the last game. But as we said, Kendall has Already made a couple upsets. They're looking to make another one here today. This time it's for all the marbles, though. And Keshequa controls the, the ball on their end here. Good defense here by Kendall. Yeah, good clear out, and it's coming down the sideline, so it's not even a throw. 15's got the ball. Kendall's numbers are a lot easier <laughs> to read. From the front side, I cannot read Keshequa's. We see Kendall clear the ball here to midfield. Number 14 for Keshequa moves it up. Down the sideline here, good defense there. Keshequa really controlling the ball the first uh, few minutes here of the game. First yeah, that's, so. a, that's gonna be a foul called right there. He tripped him up, never got a piece of the ball. Any good ref's probably gonna call that every time. Here comes the free kick here. Oh, and there it is. First goal. That did Off not take here. long. Keshequa number seven, Captain Nathan Thayers, 11th grader, puts Keshequa on the board here. Let's take a look at this one. So you can see right off this. Free kick comes in, crosses over the middle. Yeah. Kendall actually got on the end of that kick and just wasn't able to control it or clear it. Oh, no goal? No goal. Offsides called, wow, look at that. Thank you, there is a parent in the stands who just made sure we understood that. A lot going on over there. Now one of the uh, Keshequa players is And number seven's really giving it to the ref here, complaining about the offsides. The ref's telling him he's got to just play, knock it off early in the game here. So that could be a huge break here for Kendall. Yeah, at another stop, we can take a look at that again and see what <laughs> the ref saw. Yeah, I'd be interested to see that. I didn't see that at all. And here's the cross for. Wow. And there, there and it is. And right it doesn't there. matter because 
they come back and just put it right back on the board. That did not take long at all. I believe that was number 12, Avery Strobel. Let's take a look at this actual goal. Yeah, he's definitely on sides there for this cross. Eight puts it across, comes on side. Yep, look at that. Beautiful just missed touch. the fingertips Beautiful there finish. from the yeah, goaltender the keep, for Kendall. Keep tried to get his hands on it, but. So that offsides really doesn't play much of a factor. Nope. Kashokwa keeps their head and comes right back and scores 30 seconds later. So Kendall was hoping for a quick start. Obviously didn't turn out that way. Went quick in the other direction. But we'll see, it's early. We've got to see how each team likes to play the ball. More controlled, some long passes. Saw two very different styles in the previous game. Over in the corner, Kendall. We're gonna get a goal kick here. Yeah, so far Keshaqua is playing that very swarmy kind of defense where you send a bunch of people at the guy with the ball. So we'll see if Kendall can exploit that. Tyler Malabar, one of the captains for Keshaqua, he's the keeper. He's gonna kick it out. 50-50 ball. So important in that first game that we were in, we saw Williamson get a lot of those and just take off from that. We'll have to see how these two teams uh, control those 50-50s. Yeah, when the ball's up in the air like that, if you can win it, that is huge. And you, you gotta figure being an underdog, Kendall has to win a lot of those oh and yeah. turn those into opportunities. And here, here comes, comes Keshaqua once again. Oh. Just over by number 16. 16. Right over Ian the crossbar. Did I catch that one? Yes, I did. Here it is. Good control. Turning around and just taking a quick shot. So I think really in the first, what, three, three and a half minutes here, Kendall has to slow down and just take a breath and keep control get into of the this ball. Game. Yeah. All right, Kendall plays it in. Right back to Kashiqua. Fighting over it, Kendall's got it back, but two. Playing rough, but nothing nothing there. Good heads up play right there by the uh, Kendall defender. Kicking it off the Keshaqua player. So he can pick up the throw in, try and get the ball out of here, back up around midfield. You got a throw in for Kendall. Oh, light little one. And goes right over to Keshaqua. They don't control it. Quick turnover there. Oh. Kyle, I think you mentioned this in the first game, how slippery conditions could play a, a factor in throwing the ball in, even, even oh coming yeah. off the foot. So it looks like it came off and slipped right out of the hand there. But Keshaqua got the control of it and good save there. Yeah, it's goalkeeper Jordan It's Ostrander. not raining currently, but the field is definitely still wet from the previous game. So if the ball is wet at all, these guys usually aren't wearing any kind of gloves or anything, so that's going to slip right out when you go for a throw-in. And it's pretty cold out there, too. So oh, you know, yeah. The colder, the ball's going to be a little bit harder. Fingers are going to be a little bit more numb. Back and forth here. Keshaqua seems to come away with it. Good aggressive play there. Is that number two? Yeah, Ellen number Wood, two one on of the Keshaqua. captains for Keshaqua. So like mentioned in the, the beginning there, Keshaqua is the defending uh, D1 champion. They uh, moved up to C2 this year, looking to defend their title. Yeah, they recapture got a title in a higher something to prove, you know. And uh, last year there was no state tournaments at all, so they'll really be able to, winner of this game will be able to go, go on and play states this season. Yeah, we'll have to take a look at how strong the winner of this game seems because Williamson was dominant in the last game. Genesio gave him a run for a couple of points, but I don't think it was really ever in question. So we'll see if either one of these teams can put on a performance like that. Kendall's got the ball, passing around in mid. Good controlled play. See, they got the little triangle going on, passing back and forth. Very good. Drawing defenders around. Oh, but they just give it away. One errant pass and all the work just turns it right over to the other team. It's going to be a Keshaqua throw in, I think. Yep. 
Pesciqua throws the ball in. These are those 50-50 balls that it's Kendall's going to want to win. It's just so important because anytime the ball is not in someone's possession, it's anyone's for the taking. And if you win those and you maintain possession off of them, like here, here's a throw, and you keep it with your team. That's good. You never want the team to take the ball from you on when you are inbounding it. Both teams are playing very fast pace right now. Start of the game, everyone's got full energy. You're going to see a lot of very fast, maybe some errant kicks like that, a little bit too much power on them. Everyone's got the nerves going on right now. they got to settle in. Tyler Malibur, one of the captains for Keshaqua, kicks it down midfield. Keshaqua takes control. Both teams really utilizing those little triangle boxes. Here come drills. the Indians, number 16. Let's see if we can clear it in the middle. Oh, going to get a I corner. Think that's a yeah, goal a corner. No, oh, wow. I thought it was a corner. I thought it played off of. Let's take a look here. Yeah, hard to tell. Tough, tough one to tell. Especially there. from the angle the ref was looking at it. So the ref called it uh, off Jeffrey Pratt for Kendall. Corner kick here. Coming into the Comes box. In. Good clear out. Nice head. Kendall looking to clear. That looked like Keshaw might have in the way. A hand, maybe not. Yeah, sometimes it's just in Cross the chest. Cross, and here we go. What oh, a right header. Off the head. What a goal. Number eight. Number eight, Reese Powers. What One of the cross. captains. Good connection here. And look at this. Yeah, that missed handball. And they really capitalize on it. Look at that. Boom. So Reese Powers with his first goal. You know the uh, Kendall fans are not going to be happy seeing that. The front end of that play, definitely off an arm, but if the hands are in a natural position, I have seen a lot of games in these sectional plays, and a lot of handballs have just not been getting called. Refs are just saying play on, can benefit both teams if they're consistent in the way they call it. So this is not the start that Kendall wanted here no. in the first 10 minutes. They were hoping to get off to a fast start. Well, like we said, they're used to being the underdog. They just got to dig deep and fight go, back, but 16. look at this. Oh, Good great stop. save by the keeper there. Great stop. Jordan Ostrander. Looks like he's going to be it down the middle here. getting tested a lot today if Keshaqua keeps this kind of pressure Yeah, up. Keshaqua looking at their, their season, it looks like they're a very high-scoring team. Uh, they came in sectionals, really defeating both teams. The first was 4 nothing, and the second game was 7 nothing. in the semis. Wow. So, you know, they put up a lot of goals in their first two sectional games. They put up more in the semis than the quarters. That's, in theory, your opponent should be getting tougher every single time. And put up seven, that's a lot. And, and for Kendall, they, numbers. Kendall's played a, a higher seed both games. So, you know, you got to expect that they're used to this. And Coach Esposito should get them under control and make a run here. Yeah, everyone's playing physical. Fast-paced game so far. Just means... A little slip there in the turf. We really haven't seen too much of the weather condition. Rained a little bit earlier yeah. for the uh, C1 finals. Usually the boots these boys are wearing built for whatever the conditions are. They should have some pretty good traction. It affects the ball a little bit more than the players I typically. I mentioned it during the first game, that some of the football games last night played on the natural grass. There was some pitchers out on oh Twitter yeah. last night, the Leroy game. Those players were, the white jerseys were no longer white, <laughs> I should say. Well, we've had some record setting rain here in Rochester and the surrounding areas recently. Feels like it never stopped. It's somehow clear right now, but the sky looks like it's not gonna be for long. So Keshaqua is going to have a free kick here. So just a little outside, probably crossing it in. Someone's going to try and find a head on that. Once again, he's Kendall's got to get bodies on these guys. Yes, Can't they leave do. them wide open. There's been multiple headers where these guys just have nobody around them. 
making it way too easy for them to convert on these goals. So the keeper boots it down, Kendall heads it in. Keshaqua does a good job of the, just the one-touch passes, getting it quick to the teammate, setting something up. There's oh, a little run, run here. Run. Keeper the comes out. Gets it. Yep. Yeah. Good little sliding pick up there, making his presence known. So we're about 10 minutes through, a little past 10 minutes through the first half, 2-0 Keshaqua. Thank you for joining us here in the Varsity Media Sports Network. Please like the YouTube page as we are covering a ton of different events around Section 5 football, girls soccer, boys soccer. We'll have live streams, broadcasts throughout the, the rest of oh the, boy, uh, that's off his foot. the fall season. Yeah, that's going to get called. He never got a piece of the ball. Shoved the other player. So we got a foul. We're going to have a free kick here for Keshaqua. Exact same spot as the last one, too. Yeah, so Kendall's got a body up here. He can't let that free header get in there. There, that's there you go. Better. Clear it out. Ooh, oh, but Physical Keshequa. play there. We're going to yep. get a whistle here. It's oh, yeah. going to go down to Kendall. Yeah, that is a, uh, that's a pretty good call. He jumped through him. You're not allowed to do that as the ref has made quite clear. Kendall fans appreciative of that call. So I'm looking out at the stands here. I didn't do this the first game this early, but it looks pretty full? like, yeah, pretty full. Got a lot of Kendall right in front of us. A little bit more of a student body for the first game, but we still got a pretty good uh, crowd here. Brave in the weather. Although right now it is dry. We got a sub coming in here. Number for Kendall. 11 coming in and 10 coming off. Entering the game for Kendall. Number 11, Joshua Esposito. Josh Esposito coming in. They got to take those opportunities. When you've got to throw in there, you got to be able to control that when it comes in. Because a little errant touch like that. Suddenly, Keshequa is pushing back down the field again with a goal kick. Tyler Malibur with the kick here. He's got a good leg on him. Keshequa controls it here, you trying to go that? to the offensive end. 50 -50. A lot of room here to run. And they pick it up again. Let's see if they kick it up to the Oh, what a move. Goes number two. And Kendall just clears it out to s reset yep. the defense here. Yeah, they need to get themselves together. Man up. Try and get a takeaway right here. Number five, Boone Douglas with the throw in. Oh. Just missed it to number two there. That had gotten Colin through. That was captain. dangerous. Take it right back though. Good little touch. Is he on? Touch there. No sign that he was goal off. Kick here. So Keshequa has off. four captains on the team. Kyle, they got goaltender Tyler Malibur, Kellen Wood, 12th grader, Nathan Thayer, who's an 11th grader, and Reese Powers. You love to see the keeper as a captain. It means your team really appreciates you. <laughs> and we saw Reese uh, with one of the goals already today. So a lot of firepower on this Keshequa team. Yeah, they're looking hot so far. Kendall with some passing, it. yep. Right to the middle of the field and taken away. Some of those passes are just coming in a little too hot. And when it comes in real fast like that, you try to control it, but it's a little tough. It'll bounce off your foot when it comes in and pop up, and then suddenly the other player's there. So the winner of this looks to play Williams Williamson in the uh, Class C state qualifier. Tuesday, November 2nd, at a site to be determined. The winner of that game will then represent Section 5 in the Far West regional game against one of the Buffalo teams. I filmed quite a few Buffalo versus Rochester area state sectional games. Those are always fun. Whoa, off the crossbar. Great pickup by the keeper right there. That was getting a little sketchy. Keshequa was crashing in. 
Jordan Ostrander sends it down. 50-50 ball here. Oh, here goes Keshe with the one touch, number eight. Shot on goal, just wide. Just wide there by Reese Powers, looking for goal number two. Yeah, look at that pass. Their passing has been on. Feeding it right through, threading the needle. It's giving themselves a lot of opportunities. Kendall fans are really into this right now, even down two nothing, trying to get their, their team up here. Get some momentum going. Keshaqua controls the ball. Oh, good one oh. touch there. Let's see if anything, a oh, good block by good Kendall. Stop, yeah. Number 10 takes it up. Let's see if Kendall can get it in their offensive end here. So far they've been able to get it to midfield, but that's about it. As soon as they get to midfield, Keshaqua just surrounds everyone and takes the ball back and starts the offensive attack. It's an interesting call there because Kendall had the ball and then slid and kicked the ball away. And Keshaqua came up behind him and tripped over him. I don't know. Whenever you see someone fall like that after a slide tackle, you question, okay, is it going to be called or not? And the ref didn't like that one. Into Comes the box. The kick. Good play by the goaltender. He read that he perfectly. Gets it, he gets it quick. Let's see if, see if a Kendall can make here. a... Got someone on the outside, number 11 here. Decides they got the numbers. So this is Kendall's first real chance here. And Keshaqua does a great job of getting back. But you see that three men on him, which left his other guys open. And, well, they'll, they'll still be down on this end on this throw-in. Yeah, I was going to say, he was a little far forward. Ref tells him, hey, take a few steps back, then Boone, run up. Boone Douglas trying to get an upper hand there. Can't blame him. Yeah. I think a lot of soccer players try to get that. And when it's around the middle of the field, that's fine. Because a couple feet here or there doesn't really matter when you're that far from the goals. But when you're pinched in the corner like that, you know, Kendall should be able to take advantage of that. You can't negate that advantage they fought for. Kendall heads it in. Keshaqua now. A little back and forth in the middle. Keshaqua's got control. They're trying Keshaqua to push. Keshaqua has numbers here. Gets knocked down. Yeah, I was going to say he's probably <laughs> waiting to play advantage or something. Tripped him up. This is the third, fourth, fifth time they've been right here around the 30 <laughs> on the left side, ready to put a cross in. And a few times we've seen that the Keshaqua players just have free headers. So let's see if Kendall can continue to body up and. Good yeah, defense there. Go. Kendall looks to clear. Keshaqua controls it, kicks it in to the corner. Oh, that was not the direction he wanted that to go. <laughs> Oh, good little couple touches up to the guy on the side. And is that guy actually trying to sub? Yeah, I don't think that guy was in yet. <laughs> it's number eight leaving the game for Kendall. I don't know who that was coming in. Is that nine? Six. Six comes in for Kendall. Zach Barrett. Dan Burley in for the Indians. And Ian Deacon. So we're about halfway through the first half, otherwise known as a quarter of the way through the game. And so far it's been all Keshaqua. Kendall's found the other half of the field a couple times, but Keshaqua just gets the ball, takes it right back down. It's a lot of offensive pressure here. Yeah, so I think for Kendall, you're just going to have to see those fast breaks that they had uh, a few minutes ago. They just got to really convert those and take advantage of getting opportunities like that. Yeah, well, Can't you let saw those slip through your, your fingertips. In the first game, Williamson, that's how they scored all their goals, fast breaks. So Keshaqua's been very calculated in all of their play. A lot of back and forth, little passes to set up their goals. Kendall's just looking for something. Let's see if Kendall reverses the field here. Yeah, there he goes, number yep, 11. Switches sides, 11. Can he get it? Josh Esposito. Out. Yeah. Nah, see right there, if he had controlled that, that's an opportunity, but. We're going to get a Keshaqua throw in. Throws it in. Oh, good takeaway. Here we go. Here we go with Kendall, number 11. 
Esposito. Drop it back. Kendall playing a little touch here. They need numbers. Just look how many orange bodies are on the ball right there. Good through. Change the field. See if Esposito can do anything with that. Do a little touch pass to his teammate. Oh, I think he kept it a throw. Yeah, it's a throw. It's not a goal kick, so at Just least they're on the Just outside the reach of Colby Hughes there. Yeah. Hughes right back in the middle of it. Esposito. Esposito. Yep. Kendall doing a good job of controlling the ball. They got to get a shot on goal here. Get some momentum going. There's a trip. And we're going to get a call there right outside the box. I feel like Kendall's midfielders just have to push a little harder. The ones that are more defensive are sitting back. I'm seeing eight or nine Ketchikor Ketchiko players around the ball and only five or six Kendall. When you're on offense, you need those numbers up there. Otherwise, they can swarm you. We're going to get Michael McHugh here with the free kick. What do you do here, Kyle? Uh, you're close enough. If you trust your foot, you can take a shot. They got the wall built up. Goes for it, off they the wall. Oh, the goalie punches it out there for Keshaqua. So yeah. good play by the wall. Good play by... Check uh, out the shot again. It was on target. Mulber. Off the wall, and yeah. If he doesn't make the save there, that is on frame. So good option. Here's number 10 again, taking the corner kick. So McHugh with the corner here. Looks like he's their main place kicker here. Takes the free kick, takes the corner. Oh. oh, great play by Keshaqua. Yeah, that Header defender. right in. It looked like it was outside of the, the post, but still a nice clear. Kendall trying to keep it in. Now Keshaqua's trying to turn it into numbers here. Yep, they're trying to break back down. Good stop. A push up. Ref says play on. A lot of fans are not happy with that call, but. Right, so we're going to have a Keshaqua throw in. Off the post. Off the outside of the post. Now we're going to get a goal kick for Kendall. So thank you for joining us here in the Varsity Media Sports Network with our coverage of the C2 sectional finals between Keshaqua and Kendall. The winner is advancing to play Williamson in the C State qualifier next Tuesday. Please be sure to like our YouTube page, our Varsity Media YouTube page for upcoming broadcast and live streams all across Section 5, football, girls soccer, boys soccer. We had some field hockey going earlier. You got to get your terminology down, though. You subscribe to the page. You like the video. Sorry, Don't forget subscribe, to subscribe like to and page. subscribe. <laughs> Clearing it over. Kendall gets on the other end of it. Keshaqua takes it back. They're trying to make a play, yet. When you're down like this, you start taking kicks like that, where you think you've got an opportunity, but you're so far outside, you got to put so much power on it, just air the ball out, and you just give the ball back to the other team. Re-entering the game for Keshaqua, number 16, Ian Hendricks. All right, so just under 15 minutes to go in the first half here, 2-0 Keshaqua. And Keshaqua is going to kick the ball in here. Let's see who, who gets to it first. Kendall got ahead on it, got it back down, back and forth. Yeah, called a push. They're playing physical. Ref's calling a bit more than I think the ref last game did. Ooh. There's an opportunity, in. nothing. Ken Kendall's out. had a couple opportunities in the last few minutes here. Keshuka's playing some good defense, though. Haven't been able to convert anything. 
But like you just said, they're hanging around this area right here. They got to get it in the box. Yeah, it doesn't matter how much you win the ball in midfield if you can't take advantage of once you get it down to the other half. So Kendall might be settling in here to this game. Yeah, they're looking a bit more controlled, having some back and forth passes that they are maintaining. You just want to see them string together a few. We got a sub here for Kendall. 15 is out and eight is in. Jonathan Reyes is coming back in for Kendall. Oh, Keshaqua with this break. Kendall's able to control it here. Knocks it out though. 16 just came back in a couple, uh, couple throw-ins ago. Already pressuring. Here comes Keshaqua. This is where they've really put a lot of pressure on the Kendall defense. You've seen a couple slides like that for the Kendall goalkeeper. Yeah, Got to make sure he really corrals that ball. He's good at coming out and making sure he gets the ball, but they got to communicate back there. His defender was right in front of him for so long. Kendall controls it. Yeah, but there's another foul right there. And there's nothing egregious. That's why you're not seeing any cards. It's just you can't hit someone from the back. You can't trip them up like that. It's a little back and forth. Both teams are having things called on them. Jeffrey Pratt's going to kick it in here for Kendall. Sends it all the way down. Deep kick. Oh, nice oh. play. Saved We're by get the a keeper corner here. Yeah. 12 minutes left. Let's see if Kendall can make something happen. All right, this come in. Ooh. If he had gotten his foot on that, that might have been redirected right to the far post. So McHugh's going to take the corner here. He's taken a couple of these so far. He's been pretty accurate, placing it right where he needs to. See if anyone can get on the other end of it. Here comes over the center. Oh, a lot of bodies in the air there. I think that's another corner. Just rinse and repeat. Keep putting it up. See if one of your players can get on the other end and put it in. So I think this is really where Kendall has to kind of hope that they get a bounce here. Oh, nice clear there by Keshaqua. See if they can turn in this into any offense. Kicks it down. Good defensive play there by yeah, Kendall. Yeah, they got all over it. Just oh, does he keep it in? Makes it a throw instead of a corner. That's some good hustle right there. Yeah, so going down 2-0 uh, pretty quick in the game. Kendall could have really just mailed it in, but they're still playing tough. Oh, yeah. The offense is uh, trying to convert its chances here. They just need something to go their way on the offensive end. I think they just took a little extra time to get going. Unfortunately, that led to them being down two zip. But since then, they've been putting up a really good fight. A lot of good plays, a lot of good opportunities. They just got to find it. Just like I said last game, I thought Geneseo would score one, and they did. I think Kendall will find the goal eventually. They're just settling in. Keshequa feels much more comfortable in this position because they've been here just last year, you know. Different division, but same results, right? We're going to have a Kendall throw in. Oh, ref says hold up. It's going the other way. A lot of back and forth here, long ball. Another long ball. <laughs> Just want to see someone get it at their feet, control it, and make some kind of a pass that you know is going to someone. You don't want all these 50-50s. See, up in the air. Oh, that's a, uh, yeah, that's, that's a. Pretty hard foul right there. I'm gonna stop the clock. I believe that was number 10, Michael McHugh. Yeah, he's back up though. I think he, no, he's staying in. I was going to say, I think he has to sub. If the ref 
blows the whistle and stops the clock, you have to sub out. Even if it's just for, you know, a couple seconds. That does get his team a free kick. Unfortunately, he's the one that usually takes the free kicks, so. Yeah, he's coming right back in. You see him going over yep. right there in the top. Number 13 takes the free kick for them, sends it in. Oh, one is just chance, a wall, chance to but the that outside. Is so we're going to have a Keshaquah goal kick. See this free kick here. Comes in, little touch. Six has an opportunity here, but just too many guys in front of him. McHugh right back in the game like we mentioned, and Malabar is going to have a free goal kick here. Sends it down midfield. Header by Keshaqua. Kendall kicks it in. Good awareness right there to know his player was out on the outside. Yeah, Kendall's really settled into this game nicely. The you know two nothing, but they've uh, continued to play hard and they're showing Keshaqua they're not going away. Put a lot of pressure on the offensive end. We got another corner kick here from McHugh. Yeah, it's looked a lot more balanced after this, uh, you know, the first 10 minutes, Keshaquah came out firing on all fours, but uh, it's looking a lot more even. Ball's in both halves of the field. I think Kendall's actually had it offensively at least the past 10 minutes or so. Good opportunity here. Oh. Yeah, when things just get so the foot there of number eight. congested in front of the goal like that, sometimes you just got to get a little lucky. Kendall has not gotten lucky yet. So 7.30 left here in the C2 final first half, 2-0 Keshaqua. Thank you for joining us on the Varsity Media Sports Network. And this is where Kendall has to be careful. They can't let Keshaqua just get down the field and have open runners with open headers and players right in front of the goal. I was surprised how long that ball stayed loose for. No player got on the end of that, bounced a couple times. Oh, slipped. Yeah, no call here. there, no call, but there will be a whistle. Yep. Looks like number five there for Kendall went down. Toby Passer. Looks like he's okay. So we're going to have a drop ball. Yep. Yeah, whenever the uh, ref whistles and it hasn't gone out or any other stoppage, it's a drop. Oh, great pass. Good job by the so keeper to come out for that again. Stop again. He Mike is Jordan. fearless. Ostrander. Good boot out down past midfield. No one touches. Keshaqua with the header, and we got a little traffic there in the mid midfield. Keshaqua takes it. I would say this game's a little bit more physical than the last game. Yeah, I'd agree. A lot more body on body. But Kendall's not backing down from it. Oh boy, miss Q like that. Be very dangerous. Look at that pass across the field. The field. So here comes Kendall again. Yeah, they keep grabbing control back. Both teams are very good at getting to the other half of the field very quickly once they get control. So we're going to have a goal kick with 5.30 left in the first half. Tyler Malibur. So looks like it might be a short one by the way they're moving. No, now he's backing up. He's going to boot it. Yeah, Burley's over there. Kendall right on the end of that, but kicks it out.
Thank they've done that a few time. times, Kyle. They've they've just kicked it out just to reset the defense, and it seems to help them a little bit. Here we go with a little break. Good defensive play there by Kendall. And once again, just clearing it and letting the defense reset now. Yeah, just a little miscommunication there. He almost got the ball over to three, but it was just outside of his reach. They could have broken back down towards midfield. Instead, it's a throw in, and the ball will stay down at this half. We got a couple subs here. We got number five for Keshaqua. Boone Douglas coming back in the game. And number one for Kendall. Re-entering the game for Kendall, number one, William Clutt. William Clutt to Kendall, defender coming back in the game. And that'll just be a goal kick. Just over four left in this half. So you got to think Coach Esposito really coaching his kids here trying to get at least one goal on the board in the first half mm -hmm. cut this lead in half going to halftime a little bit momentum yeah they've been fighting back well they're looking good yeah, you got to see the last 20 minutes they've really maybe controlled the the half of the field oh yeah definitely. A much better job they've been on offense quite a bit really back and forth tempo of this game he did say they had to control the ball so they've done a good job of that now they just have to yeah, look at that switch have to finish They've got very good sight. A lot of their passes have been switching the field, crossing over, making sure, hey, we've got all these defenders over here, but there's no one on that side. Keshequa's got good control down here. They're trying to put something together. They got a lot of attackers down around the 18. But Kendall breaks it up, trying to get it away. That's a foul. Every time you're going to get called on that one. Didn't touch the ball. Tripped him up from behind. Kendall with another free kick. They've had a lot of free kicks here. Just haven't really done a whole lot with them because when they're on the defensive end, obviously you're just clearing. It's not much different than a goal kick. When you're on the offensive end, you gotta really. So here comes Kendall with the free kick down the side of the field here. A little bit of a 50-50 ball. Good defense there by Kendall. And looks like they're gonna get another goal kick. It's just a communication thing right there, too. You saw two of their defenders were right on top of each other. You got to spread out, give yourself some room to pass it around, get away from the attacker. Just get the ball out. Under two to go. Jeff Pratt takes the kick. Keshikaw controls it. Let's see if one of these teams can make another run here to end the half here. Yeah, you want that momentum going into halftime so you can have something to build off of. Obviously, not a whole lot of excitement the past 20, almost 30 minutes now. But look at there this opportunity. Go. Number eight. Beautiful. There you go. Just the control, to have that keeper running at you and for you to still bury it in the back of the net, that's huge. That's number two. Reese Powers, you'll see it right here. Very similar to his first goal, just beats the defender. The goaltender, we've, we've talked about it a few times, likes to come out with that slide stop and just unable to get that one. So goal number two for Reese Powers. Coach Esposito did say that he was uh, the key guy to stop there. Yeah, and when you know the keeper's coming out low like that, you gotta get it over him. And a lot of players will not have the control to get it over the keeper, but under the crossbar. So that was a great touch there. Like we were just saying, something to build off going into the half. Obviously, Keshequa was already in the lead, but knowing that you can still come out and score another one. So the Indians take a 3-0 lead here with 119 left in the first half. We got a couple substitutions coming in. Coming in for Keshequa for the yellow card, number four. Oh, there was a yellow card called? I did not see what happened. It could have been something with a celebration, something a player said. It was definitely during the stopped clock. 
after the goal. Interesting. Got to keep your composure, you know, win with grace because the refs are going to call you if you're doing anything negative out there. One minute. One minute. Just under a minute left. Keshaquez got the ball. They're pushing back down. Good defense by Kendall there. Gets it to his player. Trying to clear it. Get it back to mid, but Keshaquez there. I think at this point, they're just trying to burn out the rest of the clock in this half. Thirty left. I'm gonna get thrown for Kendall. Yeah, at this point, I think Kendall just wants to get to halftime, regroup a bit, stem the bleeding. Good push up, 10 seconds coming up. Just ran to a brick of Keshaqua players. Every time. They've so just there we so have it. Halftime here at Avon for the C2 finals. Keshaqua three, Kendall zero. We're going to take a break here on the Varsity Media Sports Network, and we will be back with you the start of the second half. We want to thank everyone for doing their part in these challenging times. No matter where we work from, we're still here protecting you and your family's rights. We want you to know that we will always be here for you and your family. Using our technology so we can protect you and your family no matter where we are. For your free consultation, call or text 262-COMP today. Your workers come, attorneys. Arjulo, over the middle, he's got a man. It's complete. See you later. See you later. Going long, wide open is Perazzi. He gets it. Perazzi, foot raise, 10, 5, bank it. Touchdown. Punch, power punch. Rickery, Ryder gets it back, goes over the top for Haberman. What a catch! Just Ross Simmons strips him, that's loose, and Ross Simmons is gonna take this in the other direction. Thank it! Touchdown! Touchdown, East! It's time to get hyped with Varsity Media. We offer an array of video services sure to amp up your team. From stage preseason hype videos with custom lighting and smoke machines to sideline highlights of a big game. How can your team stand out from the crowd? Contact Varsity Media today and let us tailor something your squad will never forget. These are the best times of your life. Capture them in the most creative ways possible with the sports leader, Varsity Media. Coming into Lattimore on a daily basis is the highlight of my day. You know, we'll have patients coming in. As soon as they hit the physical therapist, we introduce ourselves and, you know, we, we bring them back and you see a whole bunch of patients who are in pain, laughing and smiling and having a great time. And, Almost for that one hour that they're with us in PT, they're forgetting about all their problems. When you're lost with pain, reducing your quality of life, and then somebody there says, I can help you, there's no better feeling than that. If you're interested in staying involved with the sports you've enjoyed over the years, we may have an opportunity for you. Section 5 Athletics is currently looking for officials for several sports. Serving as a Section 5 official provides a great way to stay active, contribute to the sports you love, and earn money while making your own schedule. Visit section5.org slash officials for more information and to express your interest. 
the beautiful thing for me getting into this profession is um, the ability to work and to get to know patients, establish that rapport, that relationship with the individual. You see them go from where they start, you get to know that person, they become a part of your life, you become a part of that patient's life, and then you see them improve. I always tell the people that I work with and the patients that I see, nobody wants to be injured, nobody wants to be hurt, nobody wants to have to go through rehabilitation. So to make that environment a friendly environment and a welcoming place for people to come in and want to be a part of, because experiencing that Lattimore way where you actually maybe want to go to therapy and want to get better, um, it makes a big difference. Looking for a great way to commemorate this season's sectionals? Section 5 Athletics is excited to work with Mugs and More to offer a variety of apparel options for each sport and each season. Items include graphics specifically developed to feature the sport and year, including items such as hoodies, hats, pants, and more. Apparel for each season is available for a limited time, so don't miss your chance. Visit section5.org slash mugs and more to see the many options and place your order today. Parents and athletes, why leave your college career in the hands of amateurs? Varsity Media produces professional college recruiting videos that you can use to help land a spot on the team. Our highlight reels have proven to save thousands of dollars in college tuition. You've worked hard and put the effort into your high school athletic career. Don't take any chances when it comes to your future. Varsity Media has been producing college recruiting videos since 2010. We understand what college coaches are looking for, and our attention to detail on your highlights will separate your resume from others. Stand out from the crowd. We'll help showcase your talents. Contact Varsity Media today and order a college recruiting video. We want to thank everyone for doing their part in these challenging times. No matter where we work from, we're still here protecting you and your family's rights. We want you to know that we will always be here for you and your family. Using our technology so we can protect you and your family no matter where we are. For your free consultation, call or text 262-COMP today. Your workers come, attorneys. Over the middle, he's got a man. It's complete. See you later. See you later. Going long, wide open. Parazzi, he gets it. Parazzi, foot raise, 10, 5, make it. Touchdown. Punch, power punch. The trickery rider gets it back. Goes over the top for Haberman. What a catch. Just Ross Simmons strips him, that's loose, and Ross Simmons is going to take this in the other direction. Bank it! Touchdown! Touchdown, East! It's time to get hyped with Varsity Media. We offer an array of video services sure to amp up your team. From stage preseason hype videos with custom lighting and smoke machines to sideline highlights of a big game. How can your team stand out from the crowd? Contact Varsity Media today and let us tailor something your squad will never forget. These are the best times of your life. Capture them in the most creative ways possible with the sports leader, Varsity Media. Coming into Lattimore on a daily basis is the highlight of my day. You know, we'll have patients coming in. As soon as they hit the physical therapist, we introduce ourselves and, you know, we, we bring them back and you see a whole bunch of patients who are in pain. 
laughing and smiling and having a great time. And almost for that one hour that they're with us in PT, they're forgetting about all their problems. When you're lost with pain, reducing your quality of life, and then somebody there says, I can help you, there's no better feeling than that. If you're interested in staying involved with the sports you've enjoyed over the years, we may have an opportunity for you. Section 5 Athletics is currently looking for officials for several sports. Serving as a Section 5 official provides a great way to stay active, contribute to the sports you love, and earn money while making your own schedule. Visit section5.org slash officials for more information and to express... Welcome back to the second half of the C2 sectional final here at Avon. We got Kendall versus Keshaqua. Keshaqua with the lead, 3-0. We had the first goal by Avery Strobel in the second minute. And then second goal, Reese Powers. Avery Strobel assisted on that. And then Reese came back in the 38th minute to make it 3 nothing, Keshaqua. Yeah, you gotta think that Reese is probably looking for the hat trick now. Get the first two, why not another? Thank you for joining us here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Please go on our YouTube page, hit the subscribe button. You'll be notified of all of our upcoming live broadcast as well as live stream around section five. We'll be at a ton of football, boys soccer, girls soccer, we got some sectional finals coming up here. Very exciting time of the year here in upstate New York. Look at this, Kendall with a good push here, good control. He's got to beat another defender. He's getting around the side. Oh, he just slipped. Yeah, losing so it a little Kendall's bit. Kendall's done a good job. They're trailing on the scoreboard 3-0, but they've done a good job of getting the ball in the offensive end. They just haven't been able to convert yet. If they can convert one of these uh, pressures into a goal, could change the whole... Uh, outcome of this game here. Yeah, I think it's less on their offense and more on the Keshaquad defense. Their defense has just been a wall. Every single time they need to get back, they have numbers. Everyone's doing their part. Sometimes it comes down to the other team's defense making a mistake for you to have that scoring opportunity, and Keshaquad's just not making mistakes on defense. So Kyle, if you're Coach Esposito with Kendall, you see 40 minutes of the, the game go by, they're down three nothing. What do you change? What are the keys of the second half for Kendall? Clean up the passing a little bit. I'd say that's the majority of it. There have been quite a few opportunities where they have the ball and they go to make a touch and continue their offense and it just goes errantly astray. You just gotta connect those passes and if you connect enough of them, you're, you're down near the goal taking a shot, so. And what about Kashikwa? What do you think they have to do to take this home? Just keep doing what they're doing. Their defense is rock solid. You got a 3-0 lead. You could even give up two goals and still be <laughs> in the lead, and I doubt that's going to happen just with how strong their defense has been looking. They just got to keep it together. Yeah, they haven't given up a goal throughout sectionals their first two games, 4 nothing and 7 nothing, and now they're leading 3 nothing here in the finals. So their defense is definitely a strength of this team, and it seems like they're going with a pretty good offense with the amount of goals that they've scored in this, uh, this yeah. year's sectionals. Yeah, I'd definitely like to see Kendall string a few together and at least get one goal here. And I think they've got the potential to do it. Like I said, both their offense is looking good. Keshiko's defense has just been better. We said it in the first half, this game's a lot more physical than that first game that we, uh, we took part of. Oh yeah, a lot of muscle around. That's a foul. more guys yep. on the ground here. Good sportsmanship there by number 12 for Keshaqua. Avery Strobel, who has the first goal for them, also has an assist. So we saw we saw in the first game, we had uh, two players from Williamson kind of team up, score a bunch of their goals, and be a part of uh, the offense. We had uh, Tyrone Walker and Johnny Niles, and it oh looks yeah. like we got Avery Strobel and Powers. Powers here for Keshaqua. So we're gonna have a throw in. 
Oh, he uh, wanted to go powerful with that throw and then held up. Another foul called here. This is deep in Keshawquah's territory. So is it uh, number 10 again? McHugh. Yeah, McHugh's gonna take another place kick. He's a little shallow, not a good angle on the goal, so he's gonna have to cross this in. Puts it up. It's gonna be another chance Opportunity, here. Opportunity, another cross in. Oh. oh man, right through the box. Man. Good clear here by Kashikwa. Let's see if they could turn it into an offensive chance like they have all game. And that's exactly what I'm saying. Just stuff like that, a little cleaner. Just get on the end of a pass. And this game is a lot closer. Kendall is looking good on offense. Just can't finish yet. The winner of this game will take on Williamson in the C State qualifier on Tuesday, November 2nd. Location to be determined. The winner of that game will represent Section 5 in the Far West Regionals. Typically, that's against the Buffalo School. Back and forth in the middle, just clearing it out. Kendall's keeper comes out, grabs it. And we mentioned earlier in the game that Keshaqua was a very heavy favorite, um, winning the D1 sectional title last year in the season shortened by COVID. Yeah, going back to back is hard, especially when you bump up a division from D to C. Pretty physical, no call play on there. Yeah, that's interesting. Was number 12, trying to get by his defender, Avery Strobel. Ooh. Strobel and Powers right there with each other again. Yeah, Kendall's just got to clear the ball, get it out of their half. Right now they're looking a little, it's looking like the star of the game again, yep. you know? Keshaquah's really pressuring. That looked like it hit a hand, but bring it a goal kick. Yeah, it's off of Keshaqua. He just lets it go out. They'll take the goal kick. Even if it was off of Keshaqua, hand there, you know, same result. Going to clear the ball. Whoa. See right there, another 50-50. Kendall goes for the clear, and then Keshaquah's the one that meets the ball at the end. Ke Kendall's got to get on the end of those long passes and the clear balls. Because as you can see right here, they've got good control when they have the ball. Couple quick passes, miscommunication there. Striker was looking to run. Midi Here's thought Strobel it was be here one. trying to get a pass his defender. Good job there by the Kendall defender. Number six, Zach Barrett. Kendall throw in, Barrett throws it in. Keshaqua intercepts it. So yeah, this is very similar to the start of the, the start of the game here. Oh, the ref says no, he's going to Kendall. Some Thank you for joining <laughs> us here in the Varsity Media Sports Network. So we cover the C2 sectional finals between Kendall and Keshaqua. Kendall's trying to move pretty quick here. They got her, they're down three. Still got control of it. And Keshaqua just takes it away. Oh, good little stop there though. That, yeah, no ball. Ran straight through him. It's always gonna get called. Well, 
We'll see if they can do anything with this. This is basically where Keshaqua kept having those uh, free kicks from earlier. Obviously, they were able to capitalize quite a bit. So Jeff Pratt with the free kick, gets it in the box, and Keshaqua looks like they're going to clear it. Let's see if they can turn this into offense like they have the majority of the game here. Strobel, see if he can beat his defender and get oh, the ball. He's fast. Oh, did he? Good job on Kendall's defenders there, though, teaming up, saying there's two of us, there's only one of you, we're going to keep it. But it's right back to Keshaqua again. Ball's free. Oh boy, right on kicks the line, in. and he kicks it out. We're gonna get a throw in for Keshaqua. Number five, Boone Douglas is gonna throw it in. Far side, gets it in the box, nice little play there. Oh. Nice little chip shot, Whoa. just outside oh, wow. of the post. I thought that was in for a second there. Take a look at that one. Off the throw in. Was that in. power again, Powers? Uh, yep, yes it was, number eight. Number eight. So he almost. Just missed Little this. touch, wow. That so was dangerous. Goal kick here for Kendall. 30 minutes left. Quarter way through the half. Oh, Ugh. see, just off target. Like you're saying, Keshaquat's always there. Defense is rock solid. Yeah, it's hard to beat a team when the, oh, good play by Kendall, but look at that. There's three Kendall players, there's five Keshaqua players. More, more collisions. Very, very aggressive game here. I think no call from the ref. The ref's gonna let that play on. Yeah, is it just yeah. a throw in? Yeah. Or is this a place? Yeah, it's the throw. It's the throw. I heard the fans start cheering. I thought maybe he called a place kick. Oh, that's a good pass, but he's not there. More bodies flying all over the place here. No We're call have either, just another goal kick. Goal kick here in the C2 sectional finals between the Kendall Eagles and Keshaqua Indians. You know, Keshaqua comes in as the one seed. He's lucky he got a piece of the ball there because he came in from behind on that slide tackle. If he doesn't touch the ball there, that's a foul. That's even possibly a card. Powers, Powers Ooh. gets knocked down. We get a call here. Stoppage of play. We're going to get a foul. Powers is looking to move quick. Powers with two goals in the afternoon. Leading scorer for Keshaqua. Sends it in. It's a good touch. And there's Ooh. that goalie again, sliding. It looks like he might have taken one. No, he's okay. I think he was more just worried. <laughs> What's the call there? I think he's checking on the, the goalie here. I think he took something to the, maybe a knee or something to the face. Yeah, because he got right up, I think, yeah. Ref's just making sure he's okay on that. I think he was just on the ground because he was worried that he didn't get the ball, where is it? Now you lose track of it, you're worried it's gonna be in the goal. Looks like he's gonna be okay, stay in the game. Jordan Ostrander made a couple nice sliding saves in this game. Like so I got said, you gotta be brave to do <laughs> that. You just throw your body at someone running straight at right. you. No padding or anything. So unofficial stats here, looks like Keshaqua has seven shots on goal, while Kendall only has two. And they're going to have to definitely increase that volume if they want to get back into this game here. So we got the reps talking to the coaches over on the sideline here. Yeah, I don't know what they're discussing. Oh, probably if it was out, if it's a drop ball, which it looks like a drop ball. He did whistle that a while after the collision happened. I wasn't sure if the ball had gone out or not. So it drops to Kendall. They're gonna play it back, try and play it up forward. He's got space, but doesn't control it. Ketchikwa's coming back hard, fast. 
Little touch to 12, beautiful pass. There's Strobel, centers oh. it, and nobody was there. <laughs> Strobel was looking for his either second goal or second assist on it the afternoon. It looked like a cross, I think it was a shot. Look at this, he tries to go far post and beat the keep, and it's just too far. When you are that far to the side of the goal, you don't have much of an angle, you're trying to like, hit a very narrow gap. It's a tough shot, almost had it though. All right, so here we go. Jeffrey Pratt's going to kick it in for the goal kick for Kendall. Strobel takes it off of his thigh. Wow. Yep, no call there. He just, you know, fell over. The Kendall player had the ball, had control. The fans are loud right now. And there's a foul right there. Number 15 goes down, Lewis Conti for Kendall. We're gonna have another Kendall free kick here. There's the little floater for McHugh. Keshequa gets to it first. Just feels like they're always where they have to be. Here we go. Number 16 for Keshequa. Ian Heinrich gets knocked off the ball there. Yeah, but it was off Kendall, so they get the throw in anyways. There are two balls on the field. And Got we said it in the first half, Kyle, that when Kendall gets backed up into their end, they do a good job of clearing the ball, getting out of bounds, letting the defense reset, and then they've been able to at least get it out and get offense. But yeah, the second half has really been more down in Keshequa's end. Yeah, with the amount of pressure that Keshequa is putting on, you do sometimes just have to clear it out. Even though you're giving the ball right back to him on the throw-in, you need time to regroup because they strike very fast. You got a conversation with the refs down there. I don't know what it is this time either. <laughs> we got 25-40 left in the second half. Keshequa three, Kendall zero. The winner of this goes on to the C State, um, the Class C State qualifier, November 2nd. The winner of this game will play Williamson, who took care of Geneseo in the C1 championship prior to this game here at Avon. Yeah, we're just starting back up. I don't know what the discussion was about. We'd like to thank you for joining us here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Please oh, be sure to subscribe move. to our channel like our videos, <laughs> take a look into the rest of sectionals around section five, football, boys soccer, girls soccer. We'll have a lot of it for you. Kendall's making a good push here, just too far, no one there. They've been pretty good about those outside passes trying to come down the sideline, but just no one was there for him that time. He probably assumed someone would be. Good clear out, just making it so it's another throw in. Rather give them a throw in than have them take the ball and run with it. A little back and forth here, a couple throw ins in a row here for number 14, Ryan Stevens. And that's great, but Kendall's the one putting it out of play all the time and giving it right back, and they don't have time for that. They're down three goals, there's under 25 left. They gotta start getting aggressive. Oh, way to keep it in there. And that leads to a corner kick off the heels of the Kendall player. See if they can do anything off this free kick off the corner. Comes into play. They're right on top of it. And it goes over the goal. So it looks like we have a final in the uh, A2 final between Menden and Sutherland. Menden came out one nothing. Which sport was this? Uh, girls soccer. Girls soccer, Menden versus Sutherland, a classic crosstown matchup. Elna Barr scored in the 45th minute to make it one nothing, which ended up being the game winner for wow. Menden. Entering the game for Kendall, number one, Will looks like that game was being played over at uh, Wester Schrader. So we got a lot of section section five action going on around the uh, the area this I weekend. I can't keep up with it all. 
the amount that we cover, the amount that we don't cover is, well, the ratio is getting better. We cover most of these games now, and it's hard to keep up with exactly what's going on. Yeah, we're there. If you don't see us there, if you want us to be a part of the action, be sure to go on our website, varsitymedia.net. Let us know. We offer broadcasts, live streams for those that can't be in attendance. The weather's getting colder. Not everybody likes going out to these live events in the uh, 30 to 40 degree weather that we're going to see. Let us know if you want us to cover a game. And we will be doing, yeah, we do all the different sports, all the different seasons. Winter's coming up. We got some hockey, some volleyball, some basketball. Look at this break. Great pass back. See, that's what I'm talking about there. When you're that far outside, you don't have an angle on the goal, so you had to make that pass and take it instead of taking a shot, and that was a great look. Just doesn't connect on the end. All right, and we're going to have a goal kick here. Typically 13, Jeffrey Pratt has been taking these goal kicks. Keshequa throws it in. Everyone's bundling up down in the uh, stands. Is Looks it like raining we might again? Get some rain going here. Oh yeah. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Keshequa controlling the ball, trying to make something happen. They don't have to, but why not score another one? You know, really <laughs> shut the door. Look at this, right over the middle of the field. Kendall with a good clear out. Can they counter? Kendall with a good push here, but look at the numbers again. McHugh. Great clear, but also a foul called, it looks like. Ooh, ref stopping the clock. Is that going to be a card? It's reaching for something, yep. Yes, it is. Who's that against? The yellow. Number 10. Renee Figueroa with the yellow. He'll have to come out for a few. I'm sure he'll have a conversation with the coach. And then be right back in because a yellow does not take you out of the game completely. You just got a sub. Coach Maker and Comber over there. I'm sure he'll have a conversation with him. The Kesho Cup player is directing the wall. Let's see if we see a shot here or a pass. What do you do here, Kyle? What's what's the strategy? It's you a would little far out. I think a cross in, try and get a header on it. Yep, see that? Puts it up. And Kesho Cup's on the other end of it. Blake? Oh, bicycle kick. <laughs> oh. Wasn't expecting to see that. Yeah, and for anyone wondering about that, that little touch to the keeper. I think it went off the guy's knee. It's counted as a deflection and not a pass, so the keeper is able to pick it up. Blast it down to the other half of the field, and just like that, Kendall's back on, the, back on their heels trying to play defense. Coming to 20 minutes left, only a quarter of the game remains. I'll tell you what, Kendall's been on the uh, receiving end of a lot of these fouls. A lot of free kicks for them. Just haven't been able to turn it into anything yet. Three nothing Kashikwa here. Halfway through the second half. Once again, Kashikwa, the defending D1 sectional champion, moving up a class to C2. Really the C class. <gasps> oh, he almost kept that one in. Great effort there by Avery Strobel. We got a substitution here, number 10. Or is that number 11 for Kendall? Yeah, that's 11. Is that Esposito? Josh Esposito. Yeah, we He's talked about him a bit in. earlier. 
been in and out a few times. Number nine with the throw in for Kendall. That's Riley Robinson. Strobel kicks it forward. Great defense oh, way there to keep by it number in. 13, Jeffrey Pratt. We've announced his name a few times. Typically takes the free kicks for them. That'll be a Kendall throw in again. They got to move, as one of the fans is saying. They do not have a lot of time. Three goal deficit is a lot to overcome. Throw in the clear by Keshequa. Look at that. There's only one of them down there, but he's got the ball. Powers, Good pass. Powers and Strobel are all over this. And there's keeper, that sliding yep. stop again by the keeper. Opts to throw it out. See, I like that call. You've got an open player over there. Toss it to him instead of clearing it down the field and hoping your team wins the 50-50. Seeing if he can find some space between this Keshequa defense. Keshequa now, midfield, brings it down. Strobel. There's Powers. Oh, what a through ball. Is that going to be a corner? Yes, it is. Defender got a piece of it. Captain Nathan Thayers puts it through to Kellen Wood, another captain. And it looks like we're going to get there with a corner kick here for Keshequa. So let's see. Early in the game, Kendall had a problem getting bodies on the Keshequa players on these set pieces. Right, just like that. Yep, Keshequa is able to get ahead on it, but the keeper's there to make another save. Don't know how many that is. Board says five at the moment. So unofficially five saves so far for him. I believe that. Ostrander play, played a pretty solid game. We got a sub coming in here for Keshequa. Yeah, no one really remembers the ones that you save. They remember the ones that you don't save, but yeah. he has had an impact. Mason Pike coming into the game for Keshequa. 14, Ryan Stevens with the throw in right over Power's head. And we're going to get a goal kick, I believe. Yeah, I wasn't yes. sure who that went off of, but the Kendall player was just shielding it, making yeah. sure it went out of bounds. So he was pretty confident that it was going to be their ball on the inbound. So Kendall's free kick guy, Jeffrey Pratt, is going to send it down midfield here. And heads it ahead. And oh, that was definitely a handball. <laughs> so I feel like the refs have missed a few of those in both these games, but nothing has really come of either one of them. Yeah, as long as it doesn't greatly benefit any team and you're calling it or not calling it the same way, it doesn't really matter. Zach this is Barrett a good here. chance for Kendall. Cleared out. That's going to be Kendall throwing. Yep, they get the throw. Still on this end. See if they can do anything with it here. Barrett's going to throw it in. Just over 15 left. See Esposito there. Closest to us. Throws, Throws it, in, it in. Just nobody yeah. there. Catcher was right on the end of it. So Esposito now. Good control here. Over to Barrett. Barrett sends it in. Once again off a of Keshequa player. Which is everywhere. Keshequa is going to clear it again. So pretty, pretty common uh, series of, of events there. You know, Kendall's able to get it down to the zone, but then Keshequa just clears it pretty easily right to the offensive end. Well, Keshequa has got those stripes, and it just reminds me of, like, zebras, how they stand all together, and it's you can't tell how many there are, and it's just... Every single time they get down on this defensive end of the field, there's so many of them. Just looks like there's way more Keshequa players on the field than there are Kendall. Obviously, there haven't been any red cards, so teams are even. But they really make their presence felt.
coming up to 14 here left, and here's another break from Keshequa. looking for the hat trick. What a push. Can he get it? Oh, oh broken up play. by the defenders. Good job on Kendall's part. Is that number three? Yeah. Great clear. Colby Hughes, great, great defensive play there for Kendall. Now let's see if they could turn this into offense. They're going to have a throw in. You're seeing some urgency out of the players. Big deficit to come back from, but you're never out of it until you stop trying. So it's good to see the boys out there still pushing. Still trying to make something happen. Here's number nine. Good cross. But again, Keshequa's there. Riley Esposito. Robinson with the throw into Esposito, yep. Oh boy. Powers looks hungry. He wants that hat trick. Strobel moves it ahead, midfield. He's all alone there, so. See, he waits, nice waits, move. waits. His strikers move up the field. There's to the Powers, wide open. Through to 12. Keeper's another, there. Another sliding stop for the keeper. Jordan Ostrander. He is earning his keep today. Oh, that's a, yep. Well, we finally get a handball called, one of the most obvious ones so far this game. And look at this, there's 12 minutes left and you'd think Kendall would get to this ball a little quicker. They just let time drain off the clock. Good control, good control. Bringing it over, gonna cross it. Right there on the other end. Oh, oh what a save. That should be a goal kick. It went, oh, not a goal kick, a uh, corner, but it did go up, it hit the crossbar. Oh, I did not think I saved that replay quick enough. Let's take a look. Yeah, you can see it right there. A little touch, very good defensive play there. Ryan Stevens there, senior. Malber. And that's the thing. Kendall keeps having these opportunities where he's get they're getting in and just not finishing it. Number 10, McHugh again into the box. Kendall gets ahead on it. The keeper is out. Swarmed, look at him, 1v3. Keshequa takes the ball away. And that's been the story of this game. Kendall's up here now. Keshequa had all their players back in the box. So even off the clear, Kendall's able to take control. Keshequa clears it back down. It's gonna be another throw in. We just gotta see if Kendall can put something together as the time keeps ticking away, we're under 11. Kendall with the throw here, down the sideline. Keshaqua oh, stays in. And this is really where things have just stalled for Kendall all day, right around that 20 yard line. That defense from Keshequa is staunch. We talk about how many goals they've scored in all of their past sectional games, four goals in one, seven in another. But let's not forget the fact that they were shutouts as well. And you can see why. Teams just can't, oh my gosh, what Here's a throw. Here's Avery Strobel, you see the goaltender making himself big. Great nice play save. by Jordan Ostrander. Ostrander knows that you gotta come out and cut that angle down. You make yourself big closes up the windows, because if you're in the goal, you're only this big, a little tiny person in front of a giant goal. Second you get in the attacker's face, you'll look a lot bigger. There's a lot less of a target. Here comes the cross in on the corner kick. Keshequa is not happy with three. They want more. Oh, just over the head there. Strobel no one giving on the a good effort it. there. Kendall will have a throw in, but all the way from their end. Very close to the end line, trying to push up and right back out. Checking, checking in for 
Hear that, number four, Ian Deegan coming in for Keshequa. Number seven on his way off. So we're under the nine minute mark here in the C2 finals here. Keshequa three, Kendall zero. Thank you for joining us on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if anybody missed this game from start to finish, this game will be on demand on the YouTube channel uh, right after this game ends. So if, if you want to go back and watch it or if a player or somebody in the stands wants to watch a, a replay of this, it'll be right on there for you to be able to view as we cover not only this, but many other games around Section 5. Yeah, if you see us at a game, there's like a 99% chance that it is online on our channel. That 1% chance of the teams that really just want film, they don't want anyone else seeing it. <laughs> Kendall, Kendall inbounds throw in, in yep. here. So as mentioned earlier, the winner of this game will go on on Tuesday, November 2nd to play Williamson for the C State qualifier. Williamson defeated Geneseo earlier in the day, three to one. They had two goals by Johnny Niles. Kendall's putting some passes together, but every time it's just a brick wall for the Keshequa defense. The goalie doesn't even have to do all that much work, you know? There, he's had a few saves, a few really good plays, but for the most part, it's the actual fullbacks, the defenders, they're just sitting back there, clearing the ball out, not letting anyone even get close to the goal. So if this score line stands, which as the minutes tick by, it's looking more and more likely like Keshequa is going to walk away with this one. We'll have them versus Williamson. And that should be, oh, here comes Keshequa again. Kendall clears it out. That should be a very good game because Williamson's got that crazy fast break offense. We'll see if they can beat that tight defense here. It seems like whenever something gets over the head of Keshequa, they're able to turn it around and stop it. Um, I, I will say that I think Williams, Williamson's a little bit quicker than Kendall, so. I think they have very similar styles of play, too. Keshequa and Williamson both have that very fast break. They're going to get into your half and score very quickly, turnaround style offense. Yeah, so that game, the winner, if it stays this way, Keshequa would play Williamson Tuesday, November 2nd. Location to be determined. Oh, and that's another one. Not Powers though, 16. 16 for Keshequa. Keshequa. We are looking at Ian Heinrich, who is a freshman. So this is the second game in a row we've had a freshman score a sectional final goal. So you can oh, see the patience this. here. He just waits, waits and waits, and waits and the uses defenders. his body to break through and just punches it right over the top of the goalkeeper. And we've mentioned it multiple times today that the goalkeeper likes to go low, so these guys have seen that as well. If we're seeing it up here, they know that they're going to have to go high when they get in the box. And it just looked like more communication problems from Kendall. You had two defenders there versus one attacker, plus the keeper, and they just weren't able to communicate well and decide who was clearing that ball out. Big substitution coming in for Keshequa, maybe getting their seniors on the field. So we'll see if we can get you some numbers here that are coming in. I see a 24. So number 24, Dominic Swain, a 15. 12th grader. Number 15, Daniel Burley is an 11th grader. And yeah, a lot of them coming in. Those stripes, I can't read the front of the shirt if they see the back. Seth Ebersole checking in as well, number 18. Number, number, six, Douglas Douglas Hess. Hess. number six was number the other one, Douglas Hess. Number six, 
A lot of subs. They know they got this one in the bag. 4-0 with five minutes left. 5.30 left. It's This game's basically said and done. You just got to cross the T's, dot the I's, make sure you don't get sloppy here. Yeah, and this was a good effort by Kendall. Um, they came in knowing that they were the underdog. Uh, the, the coach even said it beforehand. They needed to get off to a quick start. And uh, unfortunately for them, they went down in an early 2 nothing hole. They yeah. were able to play pretty solid after that as well and keep it a game for a while. And then that third goal, you could kind of just see them get deflated from that. And uh, the second half, they just didn't come out the same. And, and even here, look, they're still battling, still fighting, still trying to put something on the board. It'd be awesome to be the only team in sectionals to actually score <laughs> against a team who has been shutting everyone out. Right, as mentioned in uh, the pregame, Keshequa shut out both opponents, uh, Byron Burgage and Elba 4-0 in the first in the quarterfinal game, and then Boulevard Richburg, they beat 7-0 in the semis to, to get to this game. So as of now, the way it stands, 4-0 Keshequa in the Class C2 finals. It looks like they will move on to play Williamson, which as Kyle mentioned earlier, the two offensive styles of both of those teams. I would expect some goals to be scored. I would be very surprised if Keshequa can keep up this, uh, yeah, can this they shutout streak. Can they stay clean, keep the zero? We'll have to see. And then the winner of that game will represent Section 5 in the Far West Regional. Both very strong teams. I'm sure they'll have good showings in that. Look at that, still battling, still, whoa, right off the face. <laughs> Number four took that, Ian Deaton. Here's the clear from Kendall. Mason Pike is in the game for Keshequa, number 21. It's good that a lot of these seniors who don't see a ton of minutes are able to get into a sectional final game and get some run. It's not just about the game. There's a lot of practice time put in from really all summer. I mean, these, these sports now are a year-round hobby, yeah, when the, I used to play, these kids do. we'd have summer leagues that we'd play in, and then fall, and then some kids would have other sports during the winter and spring. But a lot of these kids really dedicated to soccer. Soccer is one of those sports that you can play basically year-round. There might be an indoor league where you're playing small side. You're playing summer leagues in the spring and in the summer. There's a lot of soccer. It's such a big sport, and it's great seeing these kids out here playing and keeping it as relevant as it can be because, you know, soccer's never been that big in the state. So to put all that time and effort in dedicated to something that you love to do like this, it's just really good to see. So as we wrap it down, the final two minutes here, it looks like Keshequa will advance to the C State qualifier to play Williamson. I will remind you once again to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Varsity Media. It's going to be another goal kick. You'll be able to watch this game as well as the Geneseo Williamson finals that was played before on demand right on our YouTube channel. Yeah, when it comes down to it, I don't know which team, Williamson or Keshwakwa, I couldn't tell you who I think has the edge in that one. Keshequa's defense has been so good. I, I think that's the edge that I can point out. I'm going to be interested to see if this defense is going to be able to hold up against that offensive yeah. fast break that Williamson has. Look at Kendall here. Because Keshequa just doesn't let that ball go through like Geneseo did um, so much. So we'll see if Williamson can get the ball through. We'll see if the defense for Keshequa can stay as strong as it has been and uh, continue to shut out streak that they've had in sectionals. Yeah, we're under a minute here. So it looks like Coach Makeover from Keshequa will 
defend his sectional championship. Coming from Class D last year. Moving up to C2. So what's this next? Year. After winning this one, they're going to move up in their division. They can't be stopped. They definitely look very strong for such a, all these smaller division schools. You know, they don't have a huge player pool to pull from. So to come out and show up like this, I mean, these guys could go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, I think, with some of the bigger schools, some of the ones closer to the yeah, city. Yeah, and a lot, of these, a lot of these schools, too, from, from the southern tier, they'll, they'll come up and play the teams in Rochester. I know, I know uh, some of the teams come up and play McQuaid and, and, and Bishop Kearney and stuff like that, so they get a chance to play the better competition. Yeah. So here's the celebration here as Keshaqua takes home the C2 Section 5 championship. And everybody is on the 15-yard <laughs> line. Yeah, there they go, over to keeper. Another shutout. It is not fun to be out of the bottom, <laughs> bottom of that pile. But look at the joy here. So I would say that this Keshaqua team came out very high-powered offense, very, very impressive defense, which we didn't hear so much about. We heard more about the offense, yeah. right, before the game. But that defense really just shut this team down. And once again, three sectional games, they have yet to give up a goal. Yeah, you could see all those shutouts and not really know the story of is the defense good or was the other offense just not as good. But clearly here, those shutouts were very, very, very much on the part of Keshequa's defense. So I'll wrap it up here, but I, I will say that I think MVP of the game, Reese Powers, two goals. Yeah, two goals. That's, right? you know. Half of your team's goals. Couldn't pick up the hat trick, but yeah, he definitely had a big impact on this game. So once again, thank you for joining us here in the Varsity Media Sports Network. Please subscribe to our channel. Be on the lookout for additional broadcasts in the future for boys soccer, girls soccer, football. We'll be everywhere throughout the rest of sectionals um, here in the fall season going into the winter season. Yes, we will. And we're going to turn this over. The teams are shaking hands. They're going to do a real quick presentation of runner-up medals and the uh, the brick for the winners. We'll turn that over to the in-house PA. Yep, we'll let you hear that. We'll let you see the, the trophy presentation. Thank you for joining us here in the Varsity Media Sports Network. Once again, Tuesday, November 2nd, we'll have Keshaqua versus Williamsville. Williamson, I'm sorry. <laughs> Williamson, every time. For the C State qualifier and the Section 5 representative for the Far West Regional. Thanks for joining us here. Once again, my name is John Garino. We are with Kyle Sanson. DJ was on the camera. Thank you for watching the Varsity Media Sports Network. Have a great night. Attention. <laughs> Would both teams please make their way to the spectator side of the field for the award ceremony? Reminder to spectators, please stay off the playing surface. both of them on a great final game in the Class C2 final. At this time, Section 5 coordinators Gary Pollock and Ken Rogiski will hand out the awards for this championship game. With the runner-up, Kendall Eagles players, please come forward and accept the finalist medals as your name is called. Number six, junior, Zach Barrett.
Number 15, sophomore, Louis Conti. Number 4, junior, Devin Edick. Number 11, sophomore, Joshua Esposito. Number 3, freshman, Colby Hughes. Number 1, freshman, William Poop. Number 10, senior, captain, Michael McHugh. Number 12, junior, Jeff Moynihan. Senior, goalkeeper, captain, Jordan Mostrander. Number 5, junior, Toby Passer. Number 13, senior, Jeffrey Pratt. Number 8, freshman, Jonathan Reyes. Number 16, sophomore, Hunter Richards. Number 9, junior, Riley Robinson. Number 7, senior, Josh Smith. Number 2, senior, Shane Stock. Number 18, sophomore, Austin Work. Number 20, senior, Ethan Woodhams. And double zero, goalkeeper, sophomore, Jimmy Swift. Congratulations, Kendall Eagles, on a great season. And now, for the presentation of championship medals to the 2021 Section 5 Class C2 Champions, the Keshequa Indians. Would the players come forward when their name is called to receive their medal? Freshman number 16, Ian Henrich. Freshman number 18, Seth Eversole. Sophomore number 5, Boom Douglas. Sophomore number 15, Dan Burley. Junior, number six, Douglas Hess. Junior, goalkeeper, Gray Miller. Junior, number 13, Jude Luther. Junior, number seven, Captain Nathan Thayer. Senior, number four, Ian Deaton. Senior, number 21, Mason Pike. Senior, number three, Preston Buckman. Senior, number 24, Dominic Swain. Senior, number nine, Hunter Wood. Senior, number 10, Renee Figueroa. Senior, number 14, Ryan Stevens. Senior, number 11, Sterling Strain. Senior, number 12, Avery Strobel. Senior, captain, goalkeeper, Tyler Malibur. Senior, number two, Captain Kellen Wood. Senior, number eight, Captain Reese Howard. Now, ladies and gentlemen, may I ask the captains for the Keshequan Indians to come forward to accept the trophy for their 2021 Section 5 Class C champions for their third consecutive sectional championship, the Keshequan Indians! The Keshequan Indians will meet 
the Williamson Marauders next week on Tuesday for a, at a site to be determined. Again, Craig, congratulations everybody on a great season. Fans, both sides of the stands are open to exit, and please pick up your garbage as you leave and put it in a waste receptacle. Thank you very much. And drop